Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are starting on London's Calling, and we're going to work on the cover first. So uh, I started looking at this before Christmas and, and opened a few packs, and now I've got them kind of scrambled. But I'm going to tell you, uh, in the description is the material list, um, and I'm going to run through that real quick. I'm using two of the 8x8 eight eight packs, um, and they're called paper pads. I'm using one of the 12 by 12 paper pads, one of the 12 by 12 patterns, and then I'm also going to use um, this uh, A4 Creative Pad, uh, which is full of l wonderful little cut aparts that you can use. And then on the flip side, if you don't use the cut aside, uh, cut apart, you have a pattern that you can work with. So honestly, I can't tell you which collection pack this came from because I scrambled them and I cut through the bottoms of, of most of them. But I, I believe this is from the patterns and that's what the backside looks like. So this is going to go on the back of the album. This blue part's going to come around and wrap our spine and come across to the front. I think this looks really nice. Um, it looks like something that would be um, a book binder. So I've added tape. Uh, to the part that's going to adhere to the spine and um, let's go ahead and get started and then I'm going to add the glue a little bit later so that it's not so messy so again this is going to wrap around the back and it looks like yeah um, there's some uh, text on here so I want to make sure it's right side up so I'm going to start by taking off just this uh, individual strip here trying to get it placed um, right here and then wrap around. Let's see how we do. At least with just one uh, strip down, it should be pretty easy to pull back off if I need to. I rearranged my craft room during the break and my light, the prevailing light, is coming over my right shoulder now and I'm not used to it yet. So I'm having a hard time seeing on my left side at the moment. I'll get used to it. Uh, the album is eight and a half by eight and a half with a two and a half inch spine. And that looks pretty good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. See how nice that looks on the edges? Okay, I think I forgot to ink this edge, or if I did, no, I did. It just doesn't look very dark, so I'm going to add a little more. There'll be uh, a likely a color block between this and the rest of the front. Just pay attention to your orientation because um, we're doing the back first. It's really easy to get messed up. Okay, now I've gone over this before, but um, I'll talk about it again. When we go to lay down the rest of this, we want to make sure that our book is not in a fully closed position or fully opened. If it's fully opened, when you go to close it, it's going to likely put so much pressure on the, on the um, edges here that it may tear. And if it's fully closed, when you open it, it's going to buckle. So you kind of have to be somewhere in the middle and I like to think of that as about a 45 degree angle here on both sides. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and start taking off the tape. And then we'll work on getting that down. Okay, let's see how we're doing. Hopefully, yeah, I rearranged my camera too, so... I was just due, my craft room had become more of just like a storage facility. I couldn't find anything. So I had to take a little break and reorganize. And um, most of you probably have learned this lesson already, but clear containers really save you a lot of time. Even if you have containers that are labeled, it's just not the same as being able to see something. So sometimes I've been doing without because I didn't think I had anything and ribbons one of those things where I had it stored but not in a clear container so I never knew what I had. Okay let's do a little bit of housekeeping. Oh and by the way Happy New Year. It is January 1st. Okay 45 degree angles. I'm going to roll that around. And 
that looks beautiful, doesn't it? I think that looks just fine. Now, I really like this medallion, and that is why I chose this for the back. It's just so beautiful. It could have even been the cover. Now, when I went to trim this down to eight and three eighths to go on the cover, the medallion was actually too low. So I actually took a little bit off the top um, so that I could get the, the full medallion in. So you may want to consider that when you're trimming your 12 by 12 down. All right, I need a break to um, cut and dry fit um, the rest of the cover. I'll be back in just a second. All right, everyone, I've chosen this beautiful clock paper for the cover and it's gonna be the base of the cover. And then I've got a couple of cut aparts that I'm gonna put on top. So this is from the 12 by 12 paper pad. And I inked it and I'm gonna lay it down. got some uh, letters on it so I just want to make sure I had the right orientation everything looks good okay now from the the a4 collection pad there is um, what's a large cut apart, and I cut the frame out, and I tried to use it on the cover, and it's just a little oversized. So what I did was, there's a clock in the background, so I just cut and followed. This was the top of the cut apart, and this was the bottom. Actually, it was a little bit lower. Followed the line of this clock here, and then I fussy cut Big Ben out, push these two pieces together just a little bit so when I layer it, you won't see the edges and it just looks like this has popped out and I'm rethinking that cut line. I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut in a little bit further. Do I want to? Yes. So again, I'm still following the line of this faint clock in the background. So now I need to add some ink where I just trimmed off a little bit more. I think it just softened it up a little bit. And you could continue and cut the whole thing out, but I think I like this. Otherwise, you wind up with the clock down here just kind of floating off into nothingness because the clock behind it would go away. So I'm going to fuss with this a little bit and try to figure out exactly what I want. Okay, now the more I look at it, the more I decide I don't like that piece. So this is the piece I cut off from the right hand side, so maybe I really just want this. <clears throat> And that looks, that looks much more natural to me, and you can still get the benefit of this pop. Okay, so after I fussy cut this, I had a piece of uh, cardstock that I kind of trimmed around to make it fit. The end is just a point, so I've layered some glue on there, and it's in the process of drying. I'm gonna put another layer, and that's just to stiffen that up a little bit, and also to give it a little bit of height when we actually push it down on the base. So I'm gonna set this aside and let it dry. And then when um, everything is dry, we'll come back and we'll layer this on and layer that on. But I'm not gonna lay this down until I'm ready to place that, just in case there's some more trimming or nudging that needs to be done to, to create the balance I'm looking for. Okay, so that's the, the base part of the cover. There's some additional em embellishments that I think I wanna to add to it. Um, I'm going back and forth about cutting out London's Calling and using it as a title here. The other option is we've got these letters and we can make our own London's Calling. So I'm kind of going back and forth about what I want to do there. And then, of course, there's cut aparts that can be used too. So I'm not done, but this is the base part of the cover. Additionally, inside the album, I'm going to be using a set of clock keys, which I haven't really figured out how I'm gonna use them yet, but I'm gonna use clock keys 
in the album on the pages and, poten and potentially even here on the cover. So I'll have more a little bit later when I finish. And then also going through my hardware, I found my lion's head and I believe I'm gonna install him right here on the edge. So I happen to have one left and uh, I think that's what I'm gonna do on the side. Now to install these, you can screw them in, but since the book is pretty much put together, I don't really wanna put a hole in it. And I've had great luck gluing these down. You do sometimes have to come through with a um, sanding paper to make sure it's level. And then I just trace the lion's head and stick it down. It actually, it stays. I've not had one fall off. Now, of course you don't wanna pull it out of your bookcase by this ring, but um, other than that, um, it lays pretty well. The other thing to consider when you use something this dimensional on the spine is when you go to open it, your book is going to rest on whatever that hardware is. So just consider that it's true with um, charms as well. So, all right, there'll be more soon. Hey everyone, I'm back and I'm gonna show you a couple of things that I did while I was away. I went ahead and laid this down as um, I'd indicated in the last video. I added my clock keys up here and um, you can see the arm of the clock extends. So the short arm is here, the long arm is here. I thought it made for an interesting, you know, little change. And then I also use small filigree pieces around the clock to further make a statement here. And I fussy cut a couple of other things. So on the background, you'll see blue. This said London, and it was part of the cut aparts on the A4 collection. And then the, I layered on the alphabet. And as you can see, I popped it from the cut aparts um, from the patterns pack. So now you've got the, the black white and blue here, which kind of brings in the blue gray from the clock. So I'm gonna add that to the top. This was the part of the clock that was attached to the big bin. And I'm actually gonna move it down a little bit. So offset it a little bit, move it down and attach it right there. So that's kind of what my current plan is. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I think put, yeah, make sure this gets down straight and then I can add um, Big Ben to it. And I have to go back and forth a little bit because it's kind of a wonky cut because of this. And I also want to make sure that the letters on this pattern are straight. Now it, it was cut apart at a funny angle here on top. So I need to make sure that I'm covering all that up as I bring this piece in, okay? Now I put a couple layers of glue on the tip uh, just to thicken it up. It's too um, thin to add foam or chipboard. So I just layered glue, let it dry, layered glue, let it dry. Let that dry and actually trying to decide where I want my London, how low, how high. I think I want it about here. Okay, which means I need to go ahead and put my point down. That was the whole purpose of testing that. Okay, now this is ready. Make sure it's right side up. So I want the tip to go a little bit to one side or the other of the O. You don't want it centered, it's just gonna look too deliberate. But I do want it relatively level. So uh, across the top that is. Okay, there we go. Now I fussy cut these, and I believe it's from the A4 collection also. And I'm thinking about adding them. Let's see, where's my 12? There it is, 12 is toward the top, uh, right here. And I think I will, I think it's just, it needs a little bit something. And I think I'm gonna pop those. So let's 
go ahead and use some chipboard. I generally prefer chipboard. Um, it's more rigid. If you're doing something where you think you're gonna mail it, like a card, um, I recommend um, foam because you can smash it into your um, envelope and also because of weight. But some things are just too hard to do because it's hard to cut circles out of chipboard. So it really depends. Okay, where's my noon? It goes like that. Yeah, and I definitely want it to come into the blue a little bit. Okay, I like it. So the other thing I did while I was away was um, I added Wink Estella to all the numbers and the, the circular lines. I happen to have Wink Estella and Pewter. Um, and that's a very pewter color, so it pops out a little bit more. But I think even just using clear will um, help deepen it a little bit, make it stand out a little bit more. Okay. Now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put some super shiny glaze on top of this. And I use a product called Diamond Glaze, and it's a Judican product, and I find it at Joann's. We don't sell it takes a long time to dry, so I'm not gonna apply that right now because I wanna mess around with the inside of the album and I don't wanna worry about that drying. So don't do that until you're ready to set it aside for the evening. Typically, I let it dry overnight. This is a rather large area for to cover, and one of the things you gotta be uh, careful about is getting air in it. Uh, if it's really large and then the air comes out, sometimes you could have a divot in um, the gloss. So I'm going to be very careful with that. Um, you always you keep a, a straight pen handy, so if you do get an air bubble, you can pop it while it's still wet. Okay, because it will let off some gases as it dries. Okay, there we go. So that's most of it. It still needs a little something, so I was poking around with the idea of adding you know, some of the uh, British flag um, elements somewhere, and I'm not sure where. So um, I'm gonna take a look at adding some of, I wanna get some red on that page. This is one of the things I fussy cut apart thinking I could use it, but I'm not crazy about the way it looks. Uh, so I do like the flag idea. I think it comes across better on the overall page. So um, I'll work on that, and that'll be the last detail for this page. So that's it for page one. I mean, not page one, for the cover. Now for the spine, I am going to, I was gonna put a lion head and that looks good too, but uh, in the end I've decided I'm gonna go with a keyhole. So we have a couple of different choices. I have this sort of square art deco looking one. This one looks a little bit more decorative. I think I like this one better. And I'm just gonna use my art glitter glue and glue it straight down. Now, if you wanted to put chipboard on the sides and raise it slightly, then you could put um, a jump ring in here and add charms. I don't happen to have any charms that go with this collection, but by the time you guys buy it, Julie may have found some interesting charms that will go with the collection. Like clocks, and of course I've already got the clock keys, or even uh, the clock big bin, or I forget what they call it. The loop? Is that what they call it? You guys know what I'm talking about. The Ferris wheel. They call it something else. I think it's the loop. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to set this aside for a bit and then we're going to get started on the inside. Thanks everybody for tuning in. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create. Happy New Year. All right guys, well, while I was away I did a little more planning and um, I added these elements. So these gold items are flatback pearls from Graphic 45. The red rhinestones um, were uh, little gems that I happened to have in my stash. So I placed them here, here, here. And then the gold is on the outside and the red is on the inside. And, oops, I'm missing one. And I placed the gold flatback pearls 
here and here. One of them fell out, I guess I forgot to put the glue behind it. It's sticky, but it's best to put glue also um, behind, uh, or to show that it's fastening the um, keyhole in. Gosh, I lost my words there for a second. I cut a couple of strips so I can add that red in that I was talking about, which will help pull in this red too. So I'm gonna put a little strip here and a little strip here. And I think that creates a little bit more balance. So I'm gonna go ahead and add these. And then, did I ink them? No, I didn't. And that that is gonna be it for the cover. <clears throat> uh, I guess I inked part of it. <laughs> but not all of it. <clears throat> and this is, um, there's it's several places in the collection where you can get these little strips. It's on the top and the bottom of this, but I think it's also in the uh, collection pad, scrapbook pad, I think they call it, or paper pad. I'm so used to graphic 45 vernacular. It's, <laughs> I, I wanna call them the same thing, collection. Uh, good grief. Might be time to clean my tip. Okay, I'm just gonna snug this up right here. There we go, pull in a little red here and then I'll balance it with a little red up there. There we go. And that's it for the cover. I hope you guys like it. I'll be back soon with some more from the inside. Hey everyone, it's Daphne. Welcome back. And we're working on the inside liners. Sorry, I got Nala here everywhere. Inside liners for London's Calling. And I'm really liking this album. I'm pretty happy with the way the cover turned out. So let's get started. Okay, ooh, I think I need to trim these. I do. So this is eight, or let's go, let's gonna be nine, nine and three eighths, nine and three eighths by six and one eighth. Nine and, nope, that's not right either. Start over. Okay, we're gonna do two pockets on the inside liners. These are nine and three eighths across, and they're six and five eighths deep. Nine and three eighths by six and five eighths. You're going to score a half inch on three sides. And I need to turn this down. There we go. And it's going to go in just like so. And we're going to um, put it down to the corner. This is from the uh, paper pad versus the um, patterns. And we're going to do the same thing on the front and back. And I had some coffee this morning, but I still got the jitters, which I'm surprised because I just had a nice, beautiful lunch with my husband. All right, here we go. It's a little too close to the edge. Okay. I like I said the in the last video, I moved my studio light and I'm not used to it. I'm having a hard time seeing over to the left hand side. So I'll just reposition the book to assist. Always bring your project to you. Um, try not to put your head over it. Um, for me, that matters a lot because you guys are watching, but in general, it's it's always best to try to move the project to you, which is also one of the reasons I generally do this last. But I made an exception because I'm running late and I wanted to get something out on Facebook to get you guys excited about the next project. So here we go. And I already saw lots of nice uh, likes on the uh, cover of this, so yay. Yay me. <laughs> Welcome to 2023. Okay, here we go. 
this black on black is a little challenging as well. Let's come down a little. Okay, and then I trimmed this off to go into the top of the pocket. I often put a flap on this to keep it closed, but I'm just going to make it a deep pocket. So we'll go ahead and glue this down. So it'll be an open-ended pocket, and we'll put some nice big um, inserts in here. But also, this is a great place, um, if you've traveled, uh, to put your map or some of the larger um, ephemera pieces that you have from your trip. Tickets to a museum or whatever you're doing in town, you know, that you want to keep as a memento would go into this nice big pocket. Or photos, naturally. Okay, there. Now, I'm going to do my best to do a large insert that's going to have red showing. So I think that'll look beautiful with all these colors. Okay. Again, this is 9 and 3 eighths by 6 and 5 eighths. pocket liner in there. bit of housekeeping. Okay, so I have two choices of the red to put um, as part of the topper. I have this one and then I have some red brick. Let me pull that out. And we'll see which one we like better. Oh, actually I have this as well. I think I'll use this. I think I like the plaid better. So I might do um, a plaid runner and a color block and this on the bottom because I want to use that plaid in other parts of the book. So I'm going to do an insert. We're going to do an insert and this insert's going to be seven by seven. And we're going to do one for each side, but together we're just going to make one, and then you guys can make the other one on your own. Okay, I want to do um, a fancy corner on this. <clears throat> and I'm going to do a ticket stub corner. And I'm just going to do the top two. Let's see. So this going to need to be, let me see how wide this is. Two inches. Okay, so I'm going to take two inches of this plaid. And it needs to be six and seven eighths. And I think that's going to work out just perfect because that's what's going to show. And then we could put whatever we want down here.
I'm using mahogany powder puff. A really dark gray would work really well here too. I'm gonna shove this up so I don't get any glue on it by accident. See what I mean? I'm so shaky. It's terrible. Not good for crafting. Okay, there we go. Let's take a look at that. Oh, look at that, it's lovely. Could even put like a little red bow on there if you wanted. Okay, so now I need to find something to go on the bottom. And I think that'll be just fine. So I wanna make sure I've got enough of that pattern. So here's the red brick that I liked a lot too, here. But I think I made the right choice. I think that's the right choice. So let's go ahead and add this red on the bottom. Use my pencil to mark it. I know I have some new viewers, but, um, and I've said this many times before, uh, I, use a mechanical pencil to sometimes measure things like this, especially when I'm doing color blocking, because if this goes in at any kind of an angle, you need to really mark both sides to get what looks like a, um, a very straight uh, installation. And I'll show you what I mean after I turn this off. Okay, so now I've got the right width. So now what I need to focus on is whether or not that seam is straight. And that looks pretty darn good. So I'm gonna put a mark on each side, put it in my trimmer and line up the two marks. The other tip is use this thinna, um, lead as you can. I use 0 .5, 0 0.5, 0 0.7 is the most common. Um, and I think I get a truer, because the lighter the pencil mark is, you're like, mm, do I cut it on the top of the pencil mark, on the bottom of the pencil mark, in the middle of the pencil mark? So I've always used as thin a one as I can. Did I do that right? I did, but this is the piece I need. <laughs> Okie doke. So that looks pretty good, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and ink it and we're gonna lay it in. And then you're gonna repeat this process for the back. So there'll be an insert to the front and back that look pretty much the same. And this is an extra, so you can add some photos to this if you want. But if you don't want to put an insert here and you wanna reserve it for um, items that you pick up uh, on your travels, just don't, just skip the, uh, the insert. Okay. <clears throat> I was just dry fitting one more time. Last chance to make any changes. Okay, there's our inside liner. And I think I went ahead and punched out some circles. I was really liking uh, how um, Carla Sweet was adding these to her albums. So I may um, put a black piece of cardstock around that and add it as a little tab on top. I kind of like that idea. So that when you look at it, it's kind of that circle is kind of an indicator that something's going to move. You're going to open a flap or pull out an insert or something like that. But I definitely want to. Um, 
put black around it, it doesn't stand out enough on its own. Or potentially use just a darker thing, like the clock. That looks a little too small. Something like that. So I'll add that later, and whatever I decide to do, I'll do it to both. And that's it for the inside liner. Let me get this out of the way so you can take a look. Okay, so we're gonna add a second um, insert here. You're gonna do that offline, and I'll be back shortly.